Throughout the King Killer Chronicle, Quoth is not known to trust many people. We often see him keeping secrets from his closest of friends. In the frame story, we still don't know why Quoth has changed his name and is hiding his identity as a simple innkeeper at the Waystone. It could be that he's setting up the Waystone Inn as a trap for the Chandrian, or even using the Inn to imprison himself to hide the destructive influence of the Cathay. I went over several theories about the Waystone Inn in my analysis of the Doors of Stone prologue, but whatever the case, there's one person that he's chosen to be his companion at the Waystone. For some reason, he's chosen Bast, one of the Fae, to be his apprentice and to go into hiding with him. It seems that he must truly trust Bast, and in turn, Bast seems to care deeply for Quoth, and wants his Reshi back to his old self. The charming side of Bast seems to fade behind closed doors, where we see a very dark side to him. After all, he did threaten the Chronicler, and he was the one who hired the soldiers to attack Quoth at the end of the Wise Man's Fear, and later tracked down and killed the very men that he had hired. So the question is, who really is Bast, and what purpose does he serve in the story? In this video, I'll be going over everything we know about Bast, theories on what Quoth is teaching him, what his motive is, and theories about his relations. I'll go over the theory that Bast is Quoth's son, the mother being Falu. I'll also go over theories on whether he's tied to Elodin and even Taberlin the Great. If you like these King Killer videos, make sure to subscribe because there's still a lot of theories that I need to touch on. But before getting into it, I want to ask for your patience as I give a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by 10 Times Network. If you want to grow the business of your dreams, 10 Times Network has your back. Everyone who runs a business or even sells products or services online knows how much time goes into generating customers. It's not easy. 10 Times Network handles the legwork of the sales and the marketing, so you just gotta focus on your customers and the product. They can help with everything from web development, social media growth, and ads. Whether you're a writer trying to get more readers for your short stories, or maybe an inspiring entrepreneur with a brilliant idea, using the link in the description can help you bring your dreams to life. You can start with an informational call where a 10 Times Network representative will give you a free plan about how to target your ideal customer or viewers. They've helped everything from small e-commerce stores to large Instagram influencers monetize their audience and build their business. So hey, you want to monetize your passion, you want to become your own boss, then you can get in touch today to find out how. I'm the boss now, me, and thank you to 10 Times Network for sponsoring this video. Chronicler, I would like you to meet Bastis, son of Remin, Prince of Twilight, and the Telwith Male. The brightest, which is to say the only student I've had the misfortune to teach. Glamourer, bartender, and, not last, my friend. Bast is described as dark and charming, with sharp and delicate features and cunning blue eyes. It's not until after Chronicler realizes what he truly is and calls the name of Iron to attack him that we find out he's actually a fey under a glamoury, a type of fey magic that makes a thing seem like something else without changing its inherent nature. The other type of fey magic we know of is grammary, which is the craft of making things be. Thalurian uses glamoury and grammary to make herself seem and be the most beautiful for everyone. Now the true appearance of Bast is very similar, but his eyes are all blue with no whites, and his feet are actually cloven hooves. And it's worth noting his similarities to the Greek god Pan. Pan is well known for his seduction, and much the same, Bast is implied to have relations with many of the women in the town of Noir, and in the short story The Lightning Tree, he seduces multiple women with his fey magic, on one such occasion using some enchanted reed pipes to seduce a young lady. And of course, Pan is known for his reed pipes. You could also make the comparison with a satyr, and what's interesting is that satyrs happen to exist, or at least mythology of them does, in the four corners of civilization. Outside of the Aeolian, there's a fountain with a statue of a satyr chasing a group of half-clothed nymphs. Also, bonus fact about the Aeolian, the etymology of this word comes from Aeolius, a minor Greek god who was the divine keeper of the winds and king of the mythical floating island of Aeolia. Anyway, in Tamarant, it could be that satyrs are a species of fae, and it's even possible that this statue is a depiction of Bast himself, who knows? 
Now while Bash shares similarities to the god Pan, he also shares a name with the ancient Egyptian goddess of protection, childbirth, and cats the warrior daughter and defender of Ra. This goddess is often portrayed as a cat or a human with a cat's head, and Bast is often described as having cat-like grace and mannerisms. Now as for his age, we know that he's over 150 years old, but time moves differently in the Fey, so who's to say if this makes him young or old by Fey standards? Judging by his almost childlike personality at times, I would say he's pretty young. He throws tantrums, he often converses with children as we see in the lightning tree, he has an odd possessiveness and admiration for his teacher, he's terrified of the Cathay, while Thalurian didn't react in such a shocked way, and he reacts strongly on his emotions and doesn't care about the consequences of his actions. Not to mention he even wraps himself in a blanket with a heart sewn on it when he's sad. More on that later in the video. Though the Fae are creatures of desire so it could be that they all act like this. The backstory on how Kvoth and Bast met has yet to be revealed. We know that Bast is the apprentice and Kvoth is his Reshi, and at some point he even meets Denna. But what does Reshi mean? Well, Pat derives a lot of his etymology from Latin, Old German, Greek, Hebrew, and Sanskrit. And Reshi, or Rishi, is Sanskrit for an accomplished and enlightened person. Rishis are believed to have composed hymns of the Vedas and post-Vedic tradition of Hinduism regards the Rishis as great yogis or sages who have realized the supreme truth and eternal knowledge, which they composed into hymns which they sang. Now Bast using the term Reshi is probably referring to him as a wise sage, but the connection to hymns or music is interesting as well. Possibly Reshi is giving him the title of singer. After all, Kvoth sang the song he saw in Felurian's eyes to regain control of himself. And we know that singers are one of the enemies of the Chandrian. Bast is his student, it begs the question, what is he learning? We see Bast often pretending or neglecting to read Selim Tentor, a common educational textbook about alchemy. This is the same book that Kvoth stole from Kadikis after fleeing the mayor's estate. He later gave this stolen book to Devi as a present, and he's frequently reminding Bast to read parts of the book as a preparation for their lessons. But Bast considers it extremely boring and does what he can to procrastinate reading it. In the Lightning Tree, Kvoth makes sure that Bast has it before leaving to do errands on felling day, and instead of reading, Bast leaves the book in a tree nearby, and a young boy named Reich steals it to blackmail Bast into speaking with him. Now it's interesting that he's trying to teach alchemy to Bast, since Kvoth not knowing anything about alchemy is a reoccurring theme in the book. It's mentioned that Bast has only started studying from this book a month before the frame story began in the name of the wind, so it's likely that he was teaching him something else beforehand. Maybe since he's now living among humans, Kvoth is teaching him how to be human. I don't really know. There's a part in the lightning tree where it's highlighted that Bast now feels conflicted with his own desire. Creatures from the Fey have little concept of what we would call right and wrong. Things only exist in the context of their desire. But his desires are growing complicated and are constantly conflicting with each other. Could this be because he's beginning to feel human emotions, and it's uncomfortable for him to care for people? We see him interacting with children and trading lies and information for secrets, and we also see him show some actions of kindness, like helping Nettie find the wild beehive and capturing its queen. If you have any idea on what you think Kvoth is teaching him, then let me know in the comments. Now I do want to go back to alchemy for a minute, because Bast does have reasoning to learn it. In the prologue of The Wise Man's Fear, we see a dark-haired man sneaking to the basement of the Waystone Inn. This is clearly Bast, and he's keeping quiet so that his master doesn't hear him. Now in the prologue for the Doors of Stone that Rothfuss read in a live stream, we get some info as to what's in the basement. In the basement of the Waystone, there was the smell of coal smoke and seared iron. Everywhere was the evidence of hurried work. Tools scattered, bottles left in disarray. A spill of acid hissed quietly to itself, having slopped over the edge of a wide stone bowl. I really don't think Kvoth would leave his work area in disarray like this. So after thinking about it, I'm pretty sure that this is Bast. I think he's trying to make some alchemical concoction to melt the locks on the thrice-locked chest. The chest that likely stores Kvoth's true name and some of his power. We know that he wants his Reshi back, and I think he's willing to open Pandora's box to do so. 
I also think that all the prologues in each book is actually taking place during one day, and it's likely the third day building up to some big event that's gonna happen at the Waystone Inn. Now we know that Bast is a noble in the Fane Courts. He's introduced as Prince of Twilight and the Telwith Male. We can assume that Telwith Male is a location in the Fae given the context, and we have had a few mentions of the Male. After the Skin Dancer attacks the Inn, Bast says, It was not my kind. The Male doesn't even share a border with us. It's as far away as anywhere can be in the Fae. Then, in Wise Man's Fear, Bast again makes a reference to Quoth stopping a creature from the Male. And later, during his time spent in the Fey Realm, Felurian tells him detailed stories about the politics of the Fane Courts, and mentions the Tain Male. Now this seems to suggest that the Male is not only part of the Fey, but that it's divided into pieces or separate districts. Tain Male and Telwith Male being two of these. Now Bass says he doesn't even share a border with the Male, yet he's the Prince of Telwith Male. There's just not really enough information to go on, so I'm not sure what to think about this. But let's look into what Telwith means. Now, the Tilwith Tag is Middle Welsh for Fair Family. It's the term used for the mythological fairy folk, corresponding to those in Irish folklore known as the a -she. Now the word male is an old Celtic name that became popular in France and means chief or prince. So basically, tell with male would mean prince of fairies, if it was a title. But again, I think Rothfuss is just using these two words to give a name to a location. Now as for Prince of Twilight, the Fane Realm is vast and filled with factions and courts and types of beings that are far more varied and numerous than the human world. And we know that in the Fae, it gradually gets lighter or darker depending on which direction you travel in. And Felurian is found in a moonlit grove and is known as the Lady of Twilight. So it's likely that Bast has some relation to her. And the most common theory about Bast is that he's the offspring between Kvoth and Felurian. Now you may have noticed that only Kvoth and Bast are given descriptions of their eye color changing along with their moods. We also know that Bast calls him his Reshi, which most assume means teacher, but it could possibly mean father. After all, Kvoth does act very fatherly towards Bast, by teaching him, encouraging his studies, and even occasionally reprimanding him. And Bast seems to look up to him. Well, actually, he kind of idolizes him. He's practically obsessed with trying to bring his old Reshi back. And the unusual way that time passes in the Fae could give Bast the chance to catch up to Kvoth in age and even surpass him. Now, Felurian's title, Lady of Twilight, and Bast being Prince of Twilight, is definitely enough to suggest a connection between them, but honestly, I don't think that Bast is Kvoth's son. And there's very good reason for this. His father is Remin, which yes, you could argue is another nickname given to Kvoth, but the Rothfuss endorsed deck of Fey cards by Pears gives us a depiction of Remin, and, and that's not Kvoth. If there wasn't this counter argument, I'd probably be on board with this theory. Also, speaking of this card pack, there's a lot of interesting Fey cards here. You can find them all on the Kingkiller wiki, and there's cards depicting a Tinker, Scarpy, Ari, Kvoth and Denna, and also Elodin. All of them in the Fey realm. Now, speaking of Elodin, two years ago at PAX, Rothfuss revealed that Elodin has Fey blood. I actually plan on making a video on Elodin in the future where I'll go over all of this in detail, but I do think it's possible that Elodin and Bast could be related. There's actually a part in Wise Man's Fear when Felurian was trying to describe fey words and terms, and Kvoth says, At times I felt like I'd found myself a quieter, more attractive version of Elodin. Could this be Rothfuss trying to link them together as a hint? There's not really a lot of evidence to support this theory, but I do think the fact that Elodin is part fey is very interesting. We still don't know anything about Remin, but what if I told you that Remin is Taberlin the Great. Let me explain. I do think that Taberlin is symbolic. He's a storytelling device to show how regular events can be passed down through time and end up sounding far-fetched and spectacular when the perspectives of stories change from person to person. This exactly parallels Quoth's adventure and the legendary retellings of his adventures. 
But it doesn't mean that Taberlin wasn't a real person, and I think he could be living the rest of his life in the Fey Realm. In the Eld Forest, the topic of Taberlin's cloak of no particular color comes up, and we're given three different perspectives on what it could look like. Dark with no color, like Foth's shade. All washed out in grey, like Trappus's robe, so that the original color was lost. Or, Kvoth puts out the idea that it could be patchwork from years of repairs, so that it's so many different colors that it's hard to guess what the original was. Kinda reminds me of Tom Marilyn's cloak from The Wheel of Time. Now this reminds me of the description of Bass Blanket, which is made out of patchwork and has a little heart sewn on it. Now the reason I think that a heart would be sewn on it is because Taberlin gave it to Bast as a keepsake. Something for him to hang on to so he can remember his father when he ventures out into the human world. So I'm proposing the idea that Taberlin the Great had a child with Felurian, and that child is Bast. Oh. Now there is one detail to counter this theory. Valyrian says that she's heard of Ilian, the most famous of the Rue, who composed the Lay of Sir Savian. She's heard of Orin Velocitor, but she's never heard of Taberlin the Great. So this does put a hole in the theory, but it could be as simple as the fact that he changed his name to Remen when he decided to live in the Fae. It would mirror how Kvoth changed his name to Coat before going into hiding. Now, in the name of the wind, shortly after the Skrail attack, a caravan arrives in town, and when a traveler recognizes the innkeeper as Kvoth the Bloodless, Kvoth orders Bast to drug the man, and recites his cover story for Bast to spread. The next night, after Kvoth lures out the rest of the Skrail in the woods and defeats them with an iron bar, Bast sews up his wounds, and later in the night, he sings a strange lullaby. A lullaby suggesting that Bast wishes he could lend some of his own fire, or some of his own soul, to help reignite the dwindling soul of his master. And later in Book 2, he performs a sort of healing magic where he takes the pain and injury from Kvoth and transfers it to himself. It seems like the only motive that Bast has is to restore his teacher's power by making him remember his past and all the things he's accomplished. And of course, the Chronicler is his only chance to accomplish this. At the end of Book 1, Bast sneaks into Chronicler's room in the night, and he reveals that he was the one who let information slip, like a message in a bottle. He'd been waiting for months for someone to come, anyone, and the Chronicler just happened to be the first person to take the bait and come looking. He says that this place is killing his master. People thought of Kvoth as a hero, and he played the part. Now they see him as an innkeeper, and worse, he sees himself as Coat the Innkeeper. But by telling his story to the Chronicler, it could help him remember what he once was. Then their conversation takes a turn when Bast gives a detailed and sadistic threat on what he'll do if he doesn't listen to him. You think I'm playing at some game? You think iron will keep you safe? Hear my words, manling. Do not mistake me for my mask. You see light dappling on the water and forget the deep, cold dark beneath. Listen, you cannot hurt me, you cannot run or hide. In this, I will not be defied. And ends it by saying, what do I get out of this? I get my Reshi back. It's hard to say why Bast cares so much about his Reshi, but it's evident he'll go through great lengths such as hiring soldiers to attack him in order to get him back to how he was. And we learn that until a year ago, Bast was afraid of nothing, but now he's afraid of silence. Afraid of the weary silence that gathers around his master at times, like an invisible shroud. Now Bast has some powerful magic of his own, so I don't think he's after what Kvoth knows, or what magic he knows. While it is possible that Bast has a more selfish goal, this seems to be his one and only motive. And I think he's doing what he thinks is for the greater good. Let me know what you think about these theories in the comments, and if you've learned anything new from this video. If you got suggestions for what Kingkiller video you'd like to see next, then feel free to let me know. If you want to support the channel so I can make these videos more often, then you can check out my Patreon or buy me a coffee on Ko-Fi. Big shout out to one of my newest Knights Radiant Tier patrons, Eric Kramer.